we hear your career launched on the internet. How, how did all that happen? Well, it was kind of... I mean, I, I do, I look at the internet as kind of like sped up word of mouth. It just seems that it's like word of mouth, but possibly slightly more efficient, especially over kind of long distances. Because I was, one of the main things that kicked it off was one gig. It was a 25 minute set down in, it was the whole of Cornwall in Truro. I was supporting Donovan Frankenreiter. Uh, and I went down, I, I went down on my own. Actually, I was pretty depressed that day. So I had a six hour train journey on my own because no one, there was no one around to come with me. So I was like, okay, two guitars, massive bag on my back, all my equipment on my front, usual stuff, which I did for ages. I think I did three tours like that. But kind of sat on the train for six hours and then walked down the hill and went to the gig, did the gig. Um, and they just got it instantly, more so than anywhere else I'd ever played. And they really got behind it and really kind of went mental. Um, and then it was actually the website that I had at the time that wasn't the MySpace, it was a kind of website, website uh, crippled. <laughs> It completely went down. The amount of traffic from that gig just broke it. And it wasn't just, and then the MySpace kind of quadrupled as well, because I think I'd only just got it. I was quite glad I did, really, at that point. Um, yeah, I was getting loads of messages, not just from people that were there, but it was friends of friends of friends who were like, my best mate's mate went to that gig and told me it was wicked. I'm really glad he told me about it, because I really like the stuff. And it kind of happened, happened like that, and then it just kept going. And obviously, like, YouTube stuff. So it all happened by accident. Um, well, really I, I was I was out gigging, but that kind of really gave it a kick up the just. I don't say it went to the EP that I had out at the time, which I think I can't remember if it was Full Fat or UFO. It might have been Full Fat. Went to went to number one on the Amazon kind of charts, and that was again just from that gig, just from a 25 minute set. I mean, wow. it was insane. And you've gone you've gone from that to uh, a number one double platinum selling album. Yeah. I mean, how how did that feel when? when that happened? Oh, it's, it's insane. It's crazy. Um, it's, it's quite hard to describe, really. I mean, it, I do tend to try and keep a lot of this stuff kind of at arm's length. Because, um, yeah, it's the same with, with all the press stuff. I mean, I, I don't read anything anymore. Like, any kind of review, I won't read. If anyone kind of says anything particularly interesting, someone, I've, I've got people that I kind of trust to tell me. Folks in the album. Well, it's mainly like that. Yeah, it's just like my family. Like my brother always point out anything that's actually kind of, kind of quite interesting. If someone says anything that's got like a real insight into stuff, we go, you should probably check out that because that's actually, this guy's actually on it. But if it's just kind of general stuff, then I, I don't read it and I don't watch back anything. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of detached from a lot of the stuff. I mean, the one thing that really kind of forced me to, kind of take stuff in was the Brit Awards thing. Because that kind of congratulations on that oh, nomination. Nice. Yeah, no, that was bizarre. Well, that kind of forced me to think. Hang on, this is pretty serious. I shouldn't be just messing around, which is essentially all I do. I mean, what I do is I get up on stage and I mess around, <laughs> and that's kind of why people like it. And if I start taking it seriously, I think it has the potential to go horribly wrong. So it is. Uh, yeah, it's bizarre. You also mentioned your uh, your gigging days, um, and you've gone from from doing the the gigs to having your recent UK sell-out tour. Mm. Uh, I mean, what, what was that like, touring around the country, sell-out sell out gig every night? It was, no, it was amazing. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty, it's pretty full-on, definitely. <laughs> uh, it's, it's wicked. No, touring's actually the most relaxing bit of the whole thing, by far. You also use that chance to, to write new stuff. Yeah, stuff well, I, I found out that at that point, when I, when I am kind of... On the road, I thought I wrote a lot on the road. It turns out that I start a lot of things on the road, but there's not, it's finishing things that is the hardest bit. That's the bit that actually takes kind of any kind of discipline and any kind of, I mean, that, that, that kind of initial spark is fairly, um, it's not really down, down to me. That, that's the bit that kind of just, just happens. It's not something I make happen. That bit just kind of goes, oh, oh, that'd be nice. Mm. Or if something like a little melody creeps into your head, that's not you actively kind of creating in a way, uh, it's kind of when you get further down the line and you actually got all these bits and you have to make a song, that's the bit where you're kind of really... That's um, the other thing, your, your style's quite unique. Um, yeah. It how does would you kind well. of describe it and, and what makes you, what, what makes your style really, I guess? Um, well, gu guitar-wise is probably the most, the weirdest bit, and it's kind of the bit I've probably spent the most time on for the longest longest period of time definitely because um, 
That's quite a strange playing, playing style, but it's a style that's existed for years. I mean, its roots are kind of in flamenco. There have been loads of players. I've been influenced directly by a lot of players. There's a guy called Thomas Lieb, who's awesome. You make it quite soulful as well. You turn your Do music I? into... I have no yeah, idea. It's very <laughs> quite relaxing. Yeah, no, it's well. fairly chilled out. I mean, what, I, I wanted to... I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to make something that was was fairly chilled, but still, but still kind of groovy. I think if it if it's chilled but doesn't have like a any kind of groove to it, then it's it's not really worth doing. And are you are you influenced by other musicians or all kinds of people? Yeah, kind of everything, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, there's no point in ruling anything out because you can kind of even if you don't like it, there there's always like elements of stuff you can kind of apply to what you do.